The MSI Delta 15. Is this the best AMD Advantage laptop? Let's take a look. Yo, what up YouTube? Crash Wilcox. And today we are taking a review of the MSI Delta 15. Basically the newest laptop in the lineup of the AMD Advantage uh, kind of series, which is essentially just laptops using AMD CPUs, AMD GPUs, basically. Um, there's a whole host of things that they say it has to meet um, in order to be an Advantage, I think, series laptop, but whatever. Um, so this laptop here, it is a, uh, it has a Ryzen 7 uh, 5800H CPU, eight core, 16 thread, with the new um, Radeon RX 6700M GPU. So I guess that's kind of what's new and exciting about this. So what we're gonna do is kind of talk about the pros and the cons of the laptop up front. Uh, then we'll do you know the unboxing, dive into some benchmarks, and then I'll kind of come back with my final thoughts on what I think of this laptop. So uh, just up front, I had seen somewhere a comment somebody made that this was the razor blade killer. <laughs> no, slow down. Uh, I would not go to go that far, but it, um, it is certainly a nice laptop. So just looking at this thing really quickly. Um, overall build quality, I think, is really good. Uh, this is a very thin and very light laptop. I believe it's about 4.2 pounds. Um, so very thin, very light. It's very stylish, in my opinion. This is a style of laptop I really like. Um, you know, when it came to the Asus G15, with the 5900HX, I believe, and the 6800M, just way too gamer, gamery of a feel for me. And that's obviously a personal opinion. You may like the RGB aesthetics and stuff like that. I'm not a big fan of that. This has none of it. Um, just sleek. It's got the little uh, MSI emblem down here in the corner. And outside of that, um, just moving around, you can see here on the... On the side, the port selection, it's not the best port selection you'll ever see, but to me, I think it's it's enough. Um, you don't need to go, you know, like the Asus M16 route, which I'll have a review for coming up in probably a week. It looks like, you know, they just vomited every I.O. port on the planet onto that thing, and it's cool, but it's probably overkill. So here you get the HDMI, I believe 2.0, and then you get USB A Gen 2 or 3.2 Gen 2, and then 3.2 Gen 2 Type C as well. And then it's the same on the other side. Yeah, uh, 3.2 Gen 2 Type A, 3.2 Gen 2 Type C. And then you also have like your audio and your power port. Um, so. That's plenty. I mean, you can you can make that work with just about anything. I mean, you can go USB-C dock if you need to, whatever happens to be. So I think it's a good selection of ports. It's not anything outrageous, but I think it's more than enough. Um, as far as on the bottom, got plenty of ventilation. You guys can see plenty of ventilation for the components that are down there. It's got the exhaust ports on the back. It's got exhaust on the sides. Um, so it can keep it, you know, trying to run relatively cool. Um, inside, oh, it does have the um, always important one. Ooh, it's sliding on the mouse pad, but it does have the one finger lift. Um, so if that at all cares, you, you care about, I don't know. Um, it doesn't, well, we'll get into the negatives here in a minute. Um, but it's a 1080p full HD screen, 240 hertz, 
I believe um, just for me kind of grabbing the, um, the, let me pull it up here, the display HDR. So kind of it telling me what its screen res or um, color gambit is. Yeah, so it has a 99% um, or basically 100% sRGB coverage. It has 85% Adobe RGB and then 80% DCI-P3. So a really color accurate screen for a gaming monitor, especially with that high of a refresh rate. 15.6 inches. Um, you can see it's got more ventilation here on the top of the keyboard. Um, it doesn't have the number pad. It's got the um, single zone backlighting. So I like the keyboard. The keys, they have, to me personally, I think they've got a really good feel. Um, they're tactile. Uh, I think it's got a nice click when it bottoms out. Um, the keys are spaced well. I can type very well on it. Um, trackpad is, I mean, it's medium size, four inches. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but it's pretty good size. You know, it's not a, again, razor blade. It's not a, a MacBook Pro or XPS, but it's good. It's pretty accurate. Um, what else about this? I've seen reports that the screen wobble is really bad. I don't notice it. I mean, I've typed on it and stuff and moves it around, it's not out, outrageous, um, at least for mine. Maybe somebody else is a little bit looser, but to me, screen wobble is perfectly fine. It feels rigid. Um, yeah, so going into some of the negatives, I suppose. The, uh, well, I guess I'll finish on, on a sort of positive. So it is upgradable. Um, two M.2 slots, two RAM slots that can be upgraded as well. Um, so you do have upgrade options there for you. This model came with a one terabyte SSD and 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz RAM. So moving on to some of the negatives though, before we dive into the benchmarks, um, the trackpad, while it's accurate, and it's pretty big. It has a, if you can hear, it has like a pre-click. So that's like the click, that's the actual mouse click. But it's almost like it's loose and it's just down near the bottom. So. Don't like that. Again, I, I haven't noticed it affect the performance of the trackpad at all, but I just don't like it. Um, so there is that. Uh, it has limited custom uh, customizability. Uh, like I said, single zone RGB backlit keyboard. The backlighting is great, very bright, um, but it's just that single zone has only a few options as far as you know changing it from breathing to uh, static, whatever happens to be, not a lot there. Um, let me see if I can open it up. Uh, yeah, so you know, you go into the MSI Center software, and it's not bad. I mean, it gives you a pretty good breakdown if you're monitoring. Um, but in here, in the features, like I said, you know, Mystic Light. You get just a few options, not a lot going on there. Um, but for what it does give you, like I said, the colors are vibrant. Um, you can change some things, panel overdrive, that sort of stuff. And then you also have your different options as far as how you want it to perform. So that's not bad there. The, um, Let's see, negatives. Yeah, so the upgradability, like I said, two M.2 slots and two RAM slots. The M.2 
2s are PCIe Gen 3 though, which not the end of the world. I mean, are you going to notice a huge performance difference? Probably not. But it's just one of those things. I don't know. Like you're leaving performance on the table. So that's a bit of a disappointment there. Um, and then also, if you watch Jared Tech's review, uh, I didn't even bother with this myself because it's just a huge nuisance. The motherboard is in there basically flipped. So if you want to upgrade any of this, you have to take the entire motherboard out, flip it over, and that's where your M.2 slots and your RAM are. So just, I don't know why they do this. Um, this is a huge nuisance. Like if you don't want it to be upgradable, just don't make it upgradable. You know, like the Razer Blade 14, soldered RAM. You could go that route, but you basically, you give people the option of upgrading, but then you just make it a huge nuisance to do that. I don't understand it, not a big fan. I didn't even go the route of opening it up because I, I ain't got time for that. So, uh, you do have options to upgrade, just be aware it's gonna be a nuisance. Um, and then maybe the last um, negative I would say is it does have the USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C, so no Thunderbolt on here. You know, it's not an Intel laptop, but there's no um, Type-C charging on this, which, if you're just a gamer, not a big deal, but I feel like when you make a laptop that looks the way this does, it's sort of designed to be something that can, while yes, it can game and you'll see the benchmarks and it games very well, but it has more of a professional type appearance, something you could take to work with you. Um, it does have wonderful battery life, well over 10 hours of you know light usage. Um, screen gets fairly bright, over 300 nits of brightness, which is good enough for any gaming laptop. Um, but not having Type-C charging, like this is the power brick. It's your standard, you know, 240 watt AC power adapter, like, but it's big. You know, you're gonna take this to work with you to plug in when if it had Type-C charging, you could just bring your cell phone charger. So that's a huge negative again. You have the Type-C ports here. You know, why you couldn't just add power delivery into one of them. I don't know, not a big fan of it. But that's really the laptop here. Um, build quality is great. Aesthetics are great. Um, thin and light for sure. It's just, there's a few things here that I just, you know, wish they would have not done. But with that being said, we're gonna dive into the unboxing. We'll run through some benchmarks, sort of synthetic, gaming, uh, you know, content creation type stuff. And then we'll come back here with final thoughts and, you know, if I think this laptop would be worth your money.
right, so you saw the benchmarks, and I just want to make a few observations there on those. As you can see, I mean, as far as gaming is concerned, performs very well. Um, and I don't run a lot of gaming benchmarks, I understand that. I've kind of tailored them back even as my reviews have gone on. I think I'm getting to the point now where it's the, you know, cyberpunk is the new crisis. So, like, if you can run cyberpunk at a reasonable frame rate, I feel like it's going to play whatever game you want. So, as you can see, Cyberpunk running in the mid-60s at 1080p high, very good. I mean, that's about as good as you can hope for. It performs very well in gaming, which it should. It's a gaming laptop. Um, but the one, really, that stood out to me above all the other benchmarks was that video editing benchmark with DaVinci Resolve. So, the way I sort of do it is I try to make what I would assume is a sort sort of realistic YouTube video that you would see. So it's, you know, just a couple of gaming clips, about 10 minutes worth of clips. I, you know, insert a video of me, you know, recorded. So you have that as sort of the overlay, you know, some audio. I do audio correction, um, some transitions, titles, add a LUT. So for some color correction. So kind of a what I would assume is a generic 10 minute video rendered out at 1080p. And I mean, that thing, 50 seconds to render out a 10 minute video in DaVinci Resolve. And if you saw on there, it rendered it out at in the H.265 um, codec at 370 frames per second, which is basically 11 times real world or 11 times real time. That's insane. Um, when I was using my Gigabyte Aero, the XPS 17, those, you know, using RTX 3080s in the Gigabyte Aero could not render in that amount of time. So I've seen other reviews where the, you know, DaVinci Resolve benchmarks aren't that outlandish. So I don't know what I did or, <laughs> but from my personal opinion, this thing appears to be a video editing monster. I ran it multiple times, you know, H.264, H.265, all the results were the same, so incredible results there. So, all in all, the MSI Delta 15, what are my impressions of it? I really like, <laughs> uh, I really like the laptop as a whole. I just think that there are some things with it that really detract from the overall um, value from it. Like I talked about, the motherboard, motherboard being inverted is just a huge pain. Um, and then because of the way that this laptop is designed, the aesthetic of it, the thin and light, it's designed, in my opinion, to be sort of that do-it-all laptop, right? take it to work, take it to the office, take it to Starbucks, um, do your work on it, play some games on it. Um, not having Type-C charging is super limiting because you don't want to drag that big power brick around. So I think another failure there, uh, something that I didn't mention before, but the fans run fairly quiet. Uh, so kudos to them on that. But because of that, if you, um, when I'm gaming, I don't don't know if you guys saw that, but it runs pretty hot, the CPU. So it was consistently up into the low 90s for CPU temperature, which not a deal breaker, but certainly hotter than other laptops in this class. So because of that, I feel like maybe if they were going for that slim, sleek design, thin and light sort of gaming you know, maybe they could have went with a 5600H instead of a 5800H. Maybe they could have went with a 5800U, maybe a lower power, because those fans don't run so loud and stuff. You know, obviously it's a trade-off, but you might have gotten the same amount of performance with less heat, with maybe a less, uh, you know, a lower end CPU, if you will, and still got roughly the same result. So all in all, you know, I think this laptop sort of falls in the line of, what comes to mind for me is like the Acer Predator, um, the Triton SE, kind of that um, sleek looking, thin and light, 
gaming laptop. Um, you know, they claim the 30 or the 6700M is more in line with like the 3070. I would say it's more in line with the 3060, which again, that Acer Predator Triton had a 3060. Um, so for the money, this cost me a little over $1,700. I would not recommend this, um, which is sad because I think of all the AMD Advantage laptops. I'm trying to think of what I want to say here. I think this is the best <laughs> as far as total package for the AMD Advantage laptops. You know, the G15 was far too gamery for me, for my taste. Um, the HP Omen appears to be too flimsily built. Flimsily, if that's a word. And this isn't either of those. Not gamery, built very well, but just some things that I think would make long-term ownership of it kind of a pain. And I think in that $1,700 price point, you might be able to find something better um, that sort of fits that mold or maybe save up. And I know that that sounds, you know, not it's not something for everybody, but if you could save up maybe a little bit more, bump yourself up to a razor blade base model. Um, you know, the RTX 3070 uh, with the 50 or the uh, 11800H i7 is just a little over 2000. So if you can save up just a little bit more, I think you might get something that you're happier with long term than this because the upgrading for this is a pain. Um, so I think. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I would all I would tell you to pass. If you wind up going with this laptop, I think you'll be happy. It certainly does what it does very well. It looks great. I just think, again, there are some issues with it that I think over the course of long term is going to be a pain for you. And um, just some limitations that kind of make it not fit the mode that they were going for quite as well. So that's all I really have on the MSI Delta 15. Like it, don't love it. Um, and when you're spending $1,800 on something, you probably should love it. So that's all I got to say on this. Stick around next week. I should be having um, my review of the Asus M16 coming. And I also, uh, coming next week sometime, if I can get to it, I actually bought a GPU for MSRP, um, and I'm going to have that review coming up here as quickly as I can get to it. But that is all we got. God bless.